Revheads, Santina and Will from Rebel Recycles here in Sydney, Australia. Thank you so much for joining us. We're really glad that you're here. In some of our previous videos, we've made mention of cam timing. And so today we want to take a deep dive. We showed you some dyno charts in previous videos where there were two 865 motors um, that were basically identical. And the only real difference between them was the cam timing. One of those had uh, about four degrees uh, retarded timing and one had about two degrees advanced. The bike with the retarded timing made real good horsepower, but a little less torque, but it carried that torque out through much higher RPM. The bike with the advanced cam timing didn't make quite as much horsepower, but it made a lot more torque and had a much broader torque curve starting much lower in the RPM range, and it did flatten off just about redline, but two very different characteristics, and the only real difference between those engines was the cam timing. So as we also mentioned in a previous video, currently there's only one cam available for these engines. However, how you install that cam will dramatically change how the engine will perform. So the variable means that that cam is suitable for different applications based on your installation. Yeah, and because you've got slotted sprockets and the ability to alter the cam timing, uh, it's pretty critical to understand where the cam timing is. And it is also easy, even using all the factory tools and procedures, to get the, the cam quite a bit out of time. And when you do, uh, it makes them hard to start, hard to tune, they're sluggish, um, and uh, it's really pretty easy to make that mistake. So let's show you what that looks like. The devil is in the details. The devil is in the details. Now let's have a look at the basics of how you set up an engine to degree in a cam. First thing you've got to do is establish a true top dead center. To do that, you're going to need a positive stop. When you choose a positive stop, there are a lot of things to consider. You want something that's not going to damage the piston. You also have to have something that'll clear the valves when they're opening. Now, in this case, I don't have any rocker arms in this engine, so I'm not going to have the valve opening. But I'm still going to need something that won't damage the piston, and I'm going into a sealed combustion chamber, so I have to have something that will let the compression out as the piston comes up. That's what this guy does. First, you want to move the crankshaft to a point where we're confident that the piston's not at the top. Then, install the positive stop. If, as you're putting this in, you start to feel resistance, it's finesse, not force. Don't force it, because you can certainly damage things. Now, with that positive stop all the way down, gently rotate the crankshaft and it will come up to where the piston touches that positive stop and stop. You take a reading here, whatever that reading is, you're going to go the opposite direction and see what the reading is. Then you're going to split the difference and verify your zero. Now I've already actually zeroed this degree wheel, so I'm getting 10 degrees here, and when I turn it to the other way, I'm getting 10 degrees there. So you have 10 on both sides of the positive stop, which means my zero is true top dead center. So now, just take the positive stop out, and I'm ready to set up a dial indicator to be able to measure valve lift. Here we have a dial gauge set up on the intake valve so we can measure valve lift. What's critical about setting up this dial gauge is that it has to be parallel with the valve stem in both the X and the Y axis to make the valve lift measurement accurate. If this dial indicator is on a different angle than the valve stem, your number will be wrong. This has to follow the valve stem straight down. All of the measurements are taken at 50 thousandths of an inch valve lift. So, we're going to gently rotate this engine around until the intake valves start to open. And we want to slowly bring it up to 50 thousandths of valve lift right there. 
at 50 thousandths valve there, we read the degree wheel. So what we have here is seven degrees after top dead center. So top dead center is there, and we've come seven degrees past it. So this cam that was installed with the factory tools and torque procedures is currently seven degrees after top dead center. Now the specification for the left side intake for the SNS cam, if it's on the center marks and everything is as it should be, is one degree before top dead center. So what that means is this cam is in fact eight degrees retarded. As a practical matter, you really don't want to move one of these cams more than about three or four degrees either way from its center. Eight degrees retarded, generally not a good thing. In one of these engines, what that'll do is make the motor sluggish, possibly hard to start, and it really won't make the kind of power that it would make if the cam was timed correctly. How is it possible to use all the factory tools and follow the instructions and still end up with the cam this far out of time? It happens as a result of a stack of tolerances combined with an operator who's following all the instructions to the letter but not paying attention to detail. This is the practical difference between a parts installer and a craftsperson. The first two tolerances in the stack are with the crank position tool. This is the factory tool used to locate top dead center for the left cylinder. There's clearance between the tool and the crankcase, and there's also clearance between the tool and the crank shaft. The result of these two clearances is that the crankshaft will move roughly one full degree with the tool in place. After the crankshaft locking tool, the next tolerance we have is the camshaft lock tool. This is the factory tool designed to fit in a slot in the end of the camshaft and hold it in place while it's being torqued. As you can see, the clearance between the tool and the slot in the camshaft is quite loose. So much so, in fact, that with the tool in place, cam timing can move substantially. The original equipment cam sprocket is slotted. This is what allows us to precisely control the cam timing, but it can also allow the stack of tolerances to let the cam timing get pushed quite a bit at a time. This can easily happen using the standard procedure. With all the tools in place, if you just line up the marks and torque the cam, the camshaft naturally reacts to the torque and moves clockwise as you tighten the bolt. This retards the cam timing. The resulting top dead center cam timing mark for the left cylinder looks like this. You can see that this is slightly below the center of the line. The common result of this is that at 50 thousandths lift on the intake valve of the left cylinder, which should be one degree before top dead center, is seven degrees after. So the moral of the story is a mark that looks like this is too far retarded. This is the common result you get if you use factory tools, follow the instructions, but don't check your results before assembly. This won't cause any damage, but the motor may be hard to start, hard to make idle properly, and just not make good torque, leading to a sluggish acceleration and drivability issues. By comparison, advanced cam timing will look like this. You can see the cam timing mark at top dead center is slightly above the line. When you measure to 50 thousandths valve opening on the intake valve for the left cylinder, you're going to see about 5 degrees before top dead center, which is between 4 and 5 degrees advanced. While that may not be dangerously advanced, it's probably more advanced than you're going to want for most engines. A timing mark that looks like this is probably too far advanced. This is generally not going to happen without the operator intending to advance the timing. Advancing the cam timing a few degrees increases cylinder pressure because the intake valve closes earlier. This can make more torque at low and mid-range RPM and improve throttle response. However, advancing it just a little too far can cause too much pressure, which generates excess heat and can cause detonation. A correctly timed zero mark looks like this for the left-hand cylinder. This timing mark at 50 thousandths lift on the intake of the left cylinder 
gives us intake opening between 0 and 1 degree before top dead center, which is basically spot on what it's supposed to be. If you want the timing correct, you need to be sure that after everything is tensioned down at top dead center on the left cylinder, this mark is exactly dead center. So there you have it. Uh, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, this is just another one of those things that really does matter. You want somebody that's paying attention to detail, that understands what they're doing, that knows the difference, uh, and you know, like so many things, this requires a little finesse. We talk a lot about getting the most bang for your buck when you're buying these high performance products and spending money on a cam and then not getting it installed in a way that optimizes its performance isn't getting the best thing for your book. For sure. Definitely not. So thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that you learned a little bit something new. Please make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, and leave us a comment below. And remember, if you ain't having fun, you're, you're doing, doing it wrong. wrong.